is extremely wow. dominant. Uh, let's go to the NBA, shall we? This was some interesting news. So last night I'm at home, Skip. Yep. I look at my phone. Nash out for the season. You know what I thought. But, but were you shocked? Seriously. <sighs> No, but listen. Okay, so we spoke to the president yep. and governor, Jeannie Buss, just yesterday. Yes, she sat did. here. She seemed really heavy, like she had something on her mind. Perhaps she knew. Oh, maybe. Perhaps she knew. Oh. So look, a week before the season starts, the 40-year-old Nash will miss his 19th season after he re-injured his back by lifting luggage. Nash is so the... They so they say. It could be more than that. Yep. You're right. He's the third time, a third, third overall in the career assist list. Nash is also one of the four shortest players ever to win the MVP. Take a look at that list. Those who stand out on that list clearly Steve Nash Allen Iverson so we were having a conversation this morning we thought we compare Allen Iverson Steve Nash uh, Stephen a mm. who's the better player as much as people I can respect people a asking that question Carrie skip the fact of the matter is, is that I don't think it could be answered because I don't think that I, I, I look at them as two completely different players Steve Nash was a bona fide, legitimate, quintessential point guard who could really, really shoot the rock. Allen Iverson was a shooting guard, a scoring machine, the likes of which I have not seen for his size ever in NBA history. You ask me, I'm sorry, you know I'm biased. You yes, know who you I'm are. going with. I'm going with the answer. I'm going with <laughs> Allen Iverson. I'm going with a guy. I'm, listen, hey, listen. I, listen, it, it, on this show, we are honest, Skip, and we are going to, uh, to be honest and straightforward and, and, uh, and express the appropriate level of humility. I've accomplished a great, great deal in my career. I owe a debt of gratitude to a lot of people in terms of family, friends, loved ones, etc. I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. No matter how skilled and gifted I think I am, Skip, I'm not sitting here today. I'm not Stephen A. I haven't accomplished what I have accomplished in my career if it were not for me, if, if, yeah. if it were not for Allen Iverson. He is the reason I have achieved what I have achieved. Having to cover him every day for the first 10 years of his career, as much of a headache as it was sometimes, this brother was as real yep. as it came. He brought it, not just on the court, but off the court in terms of what he expressed, honestly, to me about who he was, what he believed, et cetera, et cetera. And when he got on the court, Skip, when we talk about a warrior, I've never seen anything like it. I know Isaiah Thomas is a little man. I would take him because he's a champion and a point guard and a leader and all of this other stuff. The Nate Tiny Archibalds of the world. Yep. I wasn't around to watch Bob Cousy. I wasn't born half the time he was playing, even though I have profound respect for him. <laughs> but for me, modern day era, I'm rolling with the answer. I know Steve Nash could play. I know he's a future Hall of Famer. No disrespect to him. He should have had one MVP, not two league MVPs. Shaquille O'Neal was robbed of one of those league MVPs, Skip, and you know it. But I got some news for you. <laughs> Allen Iverson is the greatest warrior I have ever seen. This dude was a, an assassin. And would take you a career 26 point per game average. They underestimate the fact that he averaged six assists a game. This dude, you talk about a big game. You talk about warfare. You talk. I'm talking in a sports parlance, of course. You talk about guys going up against each other. You know, talking about somebody whose heart you could rely upon yep. to accept and embrace and answer the bell to a challenge. You give me Allen Iverson. I'm rolling with that brother. I'm sorry. I love Steve Nash. Love him. OK, but there's no way on earth. I mean, somebody should slap me. I should be kidnapped and, and banned from television oh. if I was to pick Steve Nash mm. over Allen Iverson. Mm. It cannot happen. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't do it. Skip. Oh, okay. I just can't do it. He won't do it. Skip. I appreciate that. And by the way, before I answer this question, speaking of the answer, I want to tell you that you are the reason for your success. I, I don't want to give Allen too much credit here. You can give him a little bit, but you are the reason that you got where you are. I'm, I'm going to say that. Because, he means a lot. Yeah, I know. He I means understand. a lot to me. I, I he get just that. Does. Okay, back to the question. This, this is very difficult for me because I have so much respect for that little warrior you just spoke of. And I, I don't disagree with one statement you just made. But in the end, you just, you, you did have to, to 
qualify with for his size. He was the greatest scorer for his size. Stephen A., how tall was this man? 5'11"? Yeah. As he said, you give him six feet? 5'11 and a half? Allen Iverson? Yeah. Allen Iverson? Legit. Allen Iverson was about 5'11". They said a six-foot guard. He actually, I don't believe he was six feet. I don't either. Okay, Steve Nash is listed as six feet three inches tall. I have stood next to him in several locker rooms. I think he's real close to 6'3". He's built oddly. He has kind of long limbs for his height. And I think he, he is taller than he played. You, you think of him as the little point yeah. guard, but I think he's taller a la Steve Kerr than you think that he really was. So, Stephen A., okay. I'm going to give this much edge, the slightest of edge, to Steve Nash. And I'm going to tell you why. This man was a wizard of a passer of the basketball. To me, to my eye, he was the greatest wow passer we've ever seen. I'm not saying he's the all-time, all-around greatest passer, because that would be somewhere between Magic and Stockton. And I think I would give that edge to Magic Johnson. But on wow passes, on spectacular passes, where you sat back and said, where did he come up with that one? That happened every night with Steve Nash. Five times he led this league in assists. Twice, as you point out, he won MVPs. And I'm with you. The second one I did not think he deserved, but he was certainly in the conversation and did win two MVPs. Stephen A., you know the 50-40-90 the, uh, club? Do you know that one where you have to shoot 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the free throw line? It's a very exclusive club. Yep. Nash leads the way. He did it four times. The next in the club is Bird with two. And then you have Mark Price, Reggie, Dirk, and Kevin Durant. That's a very exclusive club, and Steve Nash leads it with four times in that club. He's a 43% career three-point shooter, and he is a 90% career free throw shooter, which ranks number one all time. Number one from the free throw line. And he got his team four times to the conference finals, and he ran into Spurs, Spurs, Dirk's Mavericks in 06, and then Kobe's Lakers in 2010. Four times. Allen got his Sixers, and Allen's an overachiever because at 5 feet 11 inches, he got them to the one you covered, mm -hmm. one conference final, at, which they won against the Milwaukee Bucks of Ray Allen and Cassell. Yes. And then he got them to the one finals yep. against it's those the Lakers. Lakers. Yeah. And they did the best they could. That they, game they, won. They, 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 they did. Yeah. Skip. Skip, allow me, allow me to interject because I, res you know, I res uh, you know, we're, we're being serious here. I, I love you and respect you. Let me, let me just say to you why I got to respectfully disagree. Skip Bayless, do you realize who Allen Iverson was playing with? Now, I love my, I mean, that, listen, this is Philadelphia here. We talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. Some of these guys that were on, my, on this team are going to be my friends for life. The George Lynch's of the world and okay. Eric Snows, who are coaching you, under Larry you don't Brown have to at SMU, <laughs> who is the coach of that team. Just the, say the, the, it. The, no, They're no, scrubs. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you got the Kembe Matumbo. You got the Tembe. No, he wasn't scrubs. I know. I you know what I'm saying? They could play defense. You know, but, but at the end of the day, what was he playing with offensively? Wasn't much. Tyrone Hill, the Kembe Matumbo, George Lynch, Eric Snow. Come on now. You look at Steve Nash. Who did he have when he was winning those yeah, MVPs? Amari. Skip Bayless, Joe Johnson, mm -hmm. Sean Marion, mm -hmm. Amari Stoudemire. Morris. He had a crew of dudes. Yep. And not only that, hold it, wait a minute. You also have Mike D'Antoni. Here's where that becomes incredibly important. Sure. Mike D'Antoni. Remember when we called, what did you call him? Mike Antoni. Mm -hmm. You said take the D out of it. I agree. Couldn't play D. Yep. Okay. This is a guy that once sat there, Jimmy Jackson, true story, Jimmy Jackson gets traded to the Phoenix Suns. Jimmy Jackson gets stripped, gets a turnover rather, is, uh, somebody's mm -hmm. going in for a fast break layup. Jimmy Jackson goes and fouls the guy to stop the play, stop him from scoring the basket. Gets called over by Mike D'Antoni. Why? Because don't Mike D'Antoni says to him, clock. we don't do that. Yeah. Let him score. Let him score. We don't want to disrupt the tempo. You didn't have to play defense. So if you Steve Nash, what are you talking about? You got an up-tempo game. You got opportunities out the wazoo to score and, 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 and then create plays at, 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 a, at a rabid pace. That's entirely different than a structured, very disciplined, relatively archaic environment of Larry Brown's offense and Allen Iverson okay. still Time average out. 30 yeah. anyway? Go. Come Time on out. now. You just mentioned him. I think the greatest coach in, in basketball history, 
combine college and pro, Larry Brown. I believe that. Six years he coached Allen yes. Iverson. How about that environment? How about that offense? How about having Larry Brown on his side every night? Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't speak as if I disagree with you. You know how I feel about Larry Brown. You were making I think my he's point. the greatest ever. But Larry Brown... But Larry Brown was incredibly disciplined and structured offensively. He believed in milking the clock. He believed in a slower place, pace. He didn't believe in up-tempo and all of that other stuff. I'm simply saying that if you look at that compared to Mike D'Antoni, it made life incredibly easier for Steve Nash, whereas that wasn't the case with Allen Iverson, even though he was your lone offensive option mm -hmm. at 5 feet 11, and he still averaged 30. Skip mm -hmm. Ben is a four-time scoring champion. This dude carried this franchise on his back for a decade. Don't give me Steve. Steve Nash couldn't have done that. Not, not with the talent that Allen Iverson was playing with. Steve Nash couldn't have pulled that off. Okay, well, so I don't want to hear it. Okay, not, but could I Allen Iverson have, have to, Allen Iverson? Could he have gotten the Suns to four conference finals? I don't think so. That's just me at 5'11". I don't think Hold he on, could. Wait a minute. Time out, time out, time out. No, Allen Iverson would not have needed to be your point guard. You would not have needed, say, a Joe Johnson if you had an Allen Iverson. But if you had Amari with Sean Marion and a point guard and Allen Iverson was your two guard, you're damn right you could have got to a conference. No, final. you know what this you would have gotten AI. to? You would have gotten them to the answer for a reason. Uh -oh. no, you would have gotten to mutiny. That's what you would have gotten mutiny? to. Mutiny? Yeah, because Allen Iverson would be pumping 30 skip, shots skip, a game and everybody's saying, skip, what skip. about us? Skip, 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 skip. <laughs> we're simply going eye test basketball skill-wise. I'm not trying to refute the fact that there could have been some problems. We're just saying based on what we saw, yeah. talent-wise, okay. basketball-wise, what you bring to the table, Allen Iverson is on another skip, level, skip, bro. Skip, no. skip, Come on now. Skip. The greatest little skip, warrior skip, skip. in history. Wait a second. You went from <laughs> respecting Steve Nash to saying that Allen Iverson is on another level from Steve Nash? He's not. It's I'm close. If no, you no, get me I, close, I'll respect your opinion, but not another level. Steve Nash is a Hall of Famer. Steve Nash, to me, is a Hall of Famer, deserves our respect. But he could never carry a franchise the way Allen Iverson did. That cannot happen. He did. He oh. carried Phoenix. You had to give him his offense, but he no, did he it. No, uh, Did you see the talent he had? Skip, skip, skip. So you're going with Steve Nash, right? I, I said slightly. I give slightly. you a slight edge. Skip slightly gives Steve Nash the ed edge. Stephen A is going with Allen Iverson, obviously, as you can see through the dramatics and histrionics. We didn't want to know no what you over there, but think uh, on Twitter. Go on to Twitter, folks, and <laughs> the hashtag Nash versus Iverson.